I've been trying to hold off on that and eat rice cakes. Yay. Oh, gross. I know. <laughs> Even with peanut butter on it. So, yeah, and you can't get used to that taste. No, I wish, like, peanut butter makes everything 10 times better, though, but I'm allergic, so. Whoa, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, we're now streaming live on Facebook, so I'm going to press broadcast and let the media in. So, Josh, over to you. Josh, you're going to start, right? Yes. Okay, great. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this Impact Wrestling Press Pass podcast. This is Ross Foreman. I'd like to first welcome Josh Matthews. Hey, Josh, how you doing today? I'm good, Ross. I'm excited. We've got uh, one more Impact to go uh, this upcoming Tuesday night, uh, six nights from tonight before we get to Bound for Glory live next Saturday night uh, on pay-per-view and uh, certainly uh, an exciting penultimate uh, episode of impact last night and now we get ready for for next week and impact week on access tv we've got talk and shop full keg next tuesday at 10 p.m eastern time we've got countdown to glory next thursday at 10 p.m eastern time and then we've got countdown to glory the live pre-show kickoff show live 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 as live can be on access tv uh saturday the 24th one hour before the start of the pay-per-view. So it's uh, it's an exciting time. It's an unprecedented time. It's a thrilling time. Uh, we saw the announcement about the foreign language uh, for Bound for Glory, Spanish, uh, German, French, also available in, in Russia. Um, so it's, um, it's, it's one of those times right now where everything's kind of humming in the right direction. You can go to impactwrestling.com to see all the matches that are currently scheduled to take place live on the pay-per-view. And our two guests today will be competing uh, at Bound for Glory. Deanna Perrazzo, of course, defending the Knockouts Championship against Kylie Ray. That match became official back at Victory Road. And Rohit uh, will be involved in the uh, X Division six-way scramble, um, six-person scramble, because it features a, a knockout. So it, it's, uh, it's, an, it's one of those deals right now where you just kind of want to get to next week, but uh, we still have uh, to wait and Got a little bit longer to go and certainly excited about everything that's coming up. I'm going to open up the chat here in my Zoom so I can talk with uh, Simon and uh, get some get some traffic as to where we're going to go next as we're going to open this up to the media. Um, before we get to the media first, so let's um, let's welcome in Diana and, and Rohit, the, the current champions. Um, and then we'll get to our first question. It'll be Jerry from Sports Matters. But uh, Deanna, let's start with you. Uh, we're seeing a different side in Kylie. She looks a little more vicious, a little more violent. Uh, are you at all nervous about what's going to happen at Bound for Glory? Um, you know, Josh, we saw a, a little bit of a different side of Kylie last night. She held on um, to her submission after the bell, which is completely out of Kylie's um, moral compass, so to speak, right? And I think I have ex her exactly where I want her. I want to be in her head. I want to um, have her going into our match at Bound for Glory uh, a little unsure and a little hesitant to how she's going to react on live pay-per-views. So um, I'm excited to see how she's going to react. And, you know, I'm confident that uh, I will walk out of Bound for Glory still the Knockouts champion. We'll get some questions from uh, the media for Deanna in just a second. But Rohit, let's ask you a question as well. Uh, math isn't really my thing, but you've got uh, not a great chance to retain the championship at Bound for Glory facing five competitors. Um, many people say you've been kind of ducking and dodging these competitors. You say you're giving opportunities. Uh, what's, what's going on with you, Rohit? Obviously, my question is, these people already had their opportunity, so why do they get yet another opportunity? Cool, somebody won by count out, that's their opportunity. Somebody won in a non-title match, that's their opportunity. It's a conspiracy. Management, they don't want me to have the title, obviously, so they're setting up all these people to try and come and get my belt that I've obviously worked for and obviously earned. These, these, these other individuals, they're not worthy, Josh. Uh, but to think for one second I might be sweating a little bit, but I always have a plan, Josh. I always have a plan. That's been proven. We'll see how that plan pans out on the 24th. Jerry from Sports Matters. Jerry, what's going on, buddy? 
I'm good, Josh. How are you, my friend? Good, thank you. That's good. Um, so I'm going to ask Diana the first question, if that's okay, Josh. Um, Diana, we've seen some great knockout champions over the years. Um, you know, Velvet Sky, um, Gail Kim, there's been so many. But I just want to know, if, if you could face one, if one could perhaps make a comeback and, and face you, who would stand out for you? There's some great names there, obviously Gail Kim, um, you know, Awesome Kong. But who, who would stand out to you the most? Oh, um, my number one answer will always be Madison Rain. Um, not only was she, you know, I, I came out earlier this week that she was the advocate that helped put um, pieces into place to get me to uh, impact wrestling, but um, she's also a great friend of mine and to have her um, come back and she's already a five-time knockouts champion and, uh, you know, have to defend my championship against her would be a dream come true for me. I love it. And just a quick uh, quick shout out, all your Irish fans, you've got a massive following in Ireland. Do you have anything to say to them? Because they're all going to be tuned in and watching you defend that title. Yeah, well, I hope they tune in. I hope they watch me break Kylie Ray's arm and um, I hope they're as excited as I am. Thank you very much. Hey, Jerry, thanks for your question. Um, as luck would have it, um, I live with Madison Rain. She overheard what you just said, Deanna, and she has something to say. <laughs> I'm always looking for a reason. I'm always looking for um, an opponent to bring me out from behind the broadcast table and back in the ring. Um, and I'm certainly intrigued by that um, subtle challenge. So let's see how <laughs> Bound for Glory goes. And on the other side of Bound for Glory, uh, maybe, maybe we can talk to Impact Management. I hope so. <laughs> All right, Jerry, thank you very much for the question. We really appreciate it. Uh, our buddy, Jim from the Miami Herald is up next. Hey, Jim, how are you? Hey, everybody, thank you so much. Rohit, what has Border City Border Wrestling City. meant to you? And how did that help also in you getting to Impact Wrestling? Uh, Border City Wrestling, as in the promotion or the Can-Am school? Both. Both? Well, man, I was trained, I was in wrestling, I think maybe about eight or nine years and a group of us wanted just some different training. So we headed out to Windsor at the Can-Am school, uh, Johnny Devine, Johnny Bravo and Scott Demore. they run the place. And uh, we just wanted to work on our game and step it up a little bit. And we did, we were learning stuff that we didn't know. We learned things uh, different ways. And I, I think it helped, uh, helped me become more crisp and compact. And then Border City was always running big shows out in Windsor. And it was always a hard promotion to get into. And then finally, I had wrestled uh, Cousin Jake or, or Jake something, as he's known in the Indies. And Scott Demore was there. And we've been trying to get his eye for the longest time. And he watched the match and he liked it. And he said, hey, I'm going to get a hold of you guys. I have some open bookings. Um, we'll see what you got. And ever since then, I, you know, I had a shot and I had his eye. This was before he was even back at Impact Wrestling. Then he went back to Impact Wrestling, and there was an opportunity, and I fit uh, the bill because I needed to team up with a former Impact alumni, Idris Abraham. And he's like, hey, I got a spot. I know you and Idris are pretty close. Uh, I'd like to see what you got. I'd like to see you two team up. And that was back in 2017. So if it wasn't for getting into Border City and Can-Am, I don't know if my opportunity – would have came uh, with Impact Wrestling. So I'm glad I took the steps to go up to Windsor to get trained, uh, or I should say more training, and then get on the Border City show. So that means a lot to me, and I think that's a huge reason, a part of the reason why I'm here today. And Deanna, what has it been like going into Impact Wrestling and right away you're elevated? You're in the back burner and the other organization that you're with for a while, and then you leave, you have this opportunity, but right away you're put to the top. How is it dealing with the locker room? How is it dealing with any pressures and any happiness? Yeah, I mean, there's equal happiness and then equal pressure. I feel a tremendous amount of pressure um, every week, but especially, you know, for Slammiversary and now Bound for Glory, because I kind of put a target on my back saying, I'm the greatest technical female wrestler in the world and I need an opportunity to prove it. And for Impact Wrestling to give me that opportunity um, from day one, uh, to go after Jordan Grace, who was the champion at the time, and, and to, um, you know, have a, 
uh, a showing out party at Slammiversary and to show myself to the world on a new stage um, is, it, it means the world to me, but it means that I constantly need to be on my game, elevating myself, getting better training in better shape, better gear, um, the whole gamut. So uh, I'm so grateful and I put so much pressure on myself to um, give back in the only way I know how, and that's by performing to the best of my ability. All right, thank you everybody. Thanks, Jim. We'll talk to you on the next press pass, the uh, final press pass. Uh, hey, Ross, are we have a final press pass for next week before Bomb for Glory? I'm assuming yes. Yeah, we have uh, next Wednesday. We're going to go at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, two of the biggest names in Impact. We're going to go with Eddie Edwards and Sammy Callahan next Wednesday, 3 p.m. Looking forward to that next week as we uh, continue along here this week. And we're going to go to Connor now from Team Venom. Connor, do you have some questions for Deanna and Rohit? I do. You guys have had individual runs going to earn your respective titles. What separates the both of you from your opponents at Bound for Glory? You want to go first, Deanna? Oh, sure. Um, I think, you know, I'm going to say it a million times probably until Bound for Glory, but my mindset is what uh, differs me from Kylie Ray. I have had a clear path and a, a clear game plan of everything I've wanted to achieve up until this point um, at Impact. And I've hit that target every single time. I wanted to be the champion. I accomplished that at Slammiversary. I had to beat Jordan in a Iron, um, an Iron Man match, the first ever Knockouts Iron Man match, and I did that. Um, so Bound for Glory is just another step to proving everything that I say I am. Um, and we saw a different side of Kylie Ray. We haven't seen me deviate very much. And I've gotten Kylie Ray to deviate from her game plan, from her moral compass, like I said, um, from all the things that make Smiley Kylie her faith and passion and whatever. Um, you know, I'm here to be the champion. I'm here to be the best. And I have to do what I have to do. So it's going to be up to Kylie to um, do what she has to do and not get in her own way again. As for me, being an underdog, I mean, look at everybody that's in this matchup besides myself. Look at everyone that's in this matchup. Each and every individual came into impact with hype, with fanfare, all this glorious stuff. I mean, they were already pushed to the top. Me, I came in the bottom, was always at the bottom. Anytime you saw me on TV, people are like, oh, this guy is going to lose this, that, and the other. I've always been the underdog. I go on, on the 24th as the underdog. And people are like, well, well, Rohit, you're plotting and you're scheming. I'm going to do whatever it takes to keep this title. Like I said before, I am finally sitting at the big people table. I'm sitting at the large table, the royalty table. And guess what? The food, it tastes that much better at the royalty table. It tastes that much better at the championship banquet. I don't want to go back down there eating the scraps. You know what that stuff tastes like? It tastes gross. I don't want that anymore. I've had a taste of the glorious food at the championship banquet. That's why I do whatever it takes to keep my title. I'm gonna do the at Bound for Glory. Underdog or no underdog, all this hype and fanfare, all these fan favorites, all their fans on Twitter, all their followers, hyping them up, talking about how they're gonna take the title away from me. It's not gonna happen. I'll find a way to beat them. I'll find a way to outsmart them. I will find a way to walk out on October 24th, still your Impact Wrestling X Division champion. Thank you both for your time. I appreciate it. Connor, thank you for your questions. We really appreciate that as well. And we want to remind you guys, make sure that you uh, virtually raise your hands if you have any questions and you guys will get in the queue and uh, get your questions asked. Really appreciate it. Uh, next, we're going to go to Joel Torres. Hey, Joel, how are you? I mute, Joel. Hi, guys. How are you? Um, this question is for both of you guys, obviously, starting with Diona. Um, you guys have had a great career, you know, in the past few years. Now, being both of you on impact, you are on the top of your respective uh, divisions as champions, now going to, to Bound for Glory. What have you learned working on impact wrestling that you maybe haven't learned in the past? And how that how you apply that on your work style and your lifestyle also? Yeah, um, for me, I think I haven't been shy about the lack of character development that 
uh, personally I had, and then, you know, in, in other places. So um, to be on impact every week and to be able to um, show the world who I think the virtuosa is um, and explore her character every week with different opponents or with different um you know, challengers in the ring or backstage and how she would interact with each of the other uh, women in our division uh, expands me tremendously. So I think that is the biggest um, takeaway and, and learning point for me is, you know, how to be a larger than life character um, and to really bring the virtuosa out every single week. All right. How about you, um, Wright? Uh, kind of piggybacking off what she said, being on TV is a whole different animal. It's more than just being a great worker. It's more than just being a great in-ring technician. You have to be a larger than life character. Also, you have to continue to reinvent yourself and stay fresh. So, whereas when I first came in, I was trying to figure out who Rohit was, you know, part of the Dixie Hit Squad, uh, trying to find where do I fit in there. And then finally, I get a chance, you know, I get taken out of the cage and I get a chance to fly free and it feels great. And so, but then as champion, I was thinking to myself, well, I got to reinvent myself. I'm the champion now. So what do I have to do to look, walk, and talk like a champion? New wardrobe, new attitude, new swag, everything. I mean, look, uh, there's so many big things that come uh, come being champion. I just did an interview with Sports Illustrated. You can check that out on SI, uh, SI Now on Twitter. That's huge for me. That, that wasn't going to happen a few years ago. And now it is happening. So you have to be able to stay at that level and keep at that level, but keep transcending the level that you just set for yourself before. So that's totally different than just going to show to show every weekend. You're on TV, you are trying to maintain and entertain uh, the masses of people, plus garner new eyes onto yourself as well, as well as stay fresh, like I said, and reinvent yourself. And also uh, show the world and to management that you can go at that level and then you can stay at that level and then they can continue to give you the ball over and over and over again. And you're not going to drop it. You're going to excel and succeed in anything they do hand to you. All right. Excellent. Good luck to you guys on Bound for Glory. Thank you. I want to remind everybody that you guys can watch Bound for Glory live on TV via Premier Sports. In the UK, visit premiersports.com for subscription information. Also in the UK tonight and every Wednesday night. 10 p.m. free sports, free view channel 64, as well as Sky channel 422 and Virgin Media channel 553 Impact Wrestling in the UK Wednesday nights. Uh, certainly appreciate all the love and support we get from the UK. And as y'all know, we cannot wait to come back. Uh, Kristen Ashley of Bell to Bells, you're up next. Hello, Kristen. Hi, thank you. Uh, this question is for Deanna. Um, you know, you've reached the top of the women's division. Do you have any plans on joining the X division like other women have in the past? Oh, um, yeah, you know, yeah. I think, <laughs> I think it is, um, so incredible that impact doesn't limit what our women's division can do. And for Jordan to be in this six person scramble at bound for glory is, um, groundbreaking. I think it's, it's an incredible opportunity. And if she comes out the champion, um, I'm going to be so happy. But I'm also happy that there's one less woman in my division. And for the foreseeable future, I plan on ruling just the women's division. Um, intergender wrestling isn't something I've really ventured into um, thus far in my career. And uh, I can't say if um, I think it's for me. But more power to the women that um, want to be a part of that and to impact for letting them be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley, for your questions. And uh, I know you're looking forward to Bound for Glory on the 24th as well. Jake from Pro Wrestling Post. We're going to Jake next. Jake, good afternoon. How you doing, buddy? Hi, how you doing? Good, thanks. This question's for uh, Deanna. Uh, I want to ask you, how much would you say that you've benefited, benefited from only having a 30-day non-compete from your previous employer compared to maybe some of your other peers who have a 90-day because you came in much earlier and made an impact much sooner? Um, it was definitely to my benefit to have just a 30-day non-compete because I got to be the first person to um, come into impact and I kind of got all that spotlight. 
Um, so I definitely benefited 100% from being ahead of my peers. But, um, you know, even waiting 90 days for the Good Brothers or um, for Heath or for Brian Myers uh, has benefited all of us. So uh, to be the first one, I like to be the first of everything and get all that spotlight for me. Um, so I'm super thankful, but I'm just happy that we've all been able to land on our feet, um, regardless of what that timeline was. Okay, thank you very much for that question. We're gonna move on now. Next up is Dean. Dean joins us from Body Slams and Drop Kicks. Dean, how you doing, buddy? Hello, everyone. So it's actually a two-part question for Diana and Rohit, is that all right? So Diana, you've beaten Jordan, Jordan Grace. Rohit has not. So what advice would you give him going into his uh, exhibition scramble match. And Rohi, will you take the advice that Diana gives you on board when planning your strategy? Uh, I hope he takes my advice and I've beat her twice. Uh, <laughs> I think my advice would be um, to, you know, work on your cardio. She is strong, she is powerful, but um, you know, for me, it's the arm and she can't pick me up. She can't use all that power or that strength if she can't pick me up. And um, for me, it was being able to go the distance and outlast her. So I would up your cardio and I would pinpoint a body part, whether it be an arm, a leg or the back and take it out. Because, you know, if all of those limbs are hurt, she can't pick you up. She can't slam you down or throw you around. And that is a game changer, especially when it's going to be this six person scramble. If you could get probably um, one of the strongest people in this match out, it's going to benefit everyone. And of course I would take her advice. She's a knockouts champion. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> Thank you both. And good luck. Thanks for the questions. As uh, you guys have been talking about everything going down at Bound for Glory, Deanna mentioned Heath. Big night for Heath. Come Bound for Glory. We'll see if Heath can uh, earn his contract with Impact Wrestling. It's going to be a thrilling night for all of us uh, live on pay-per-view. With that said, let's go to Ella J. Ella J. from A Wrestling Gal joins us next. Hello, Ella. How are you? Good. How are you guys? Awesome. Thanks. My first question is for Deanna. You know, you rightfully earned the nickname the Iron, Woman, the Iron Woman of Impact Wrestling, but do you feel any pressure to live up to that nickname? And how do you think you're going to elevate yourself to live up to a nickname like that? Like I said, there is a tremendous amount of pressure to continue to live up to the hype that I've uh, gave to myself and the target I've put on my back. So um, at Bound for Glory, I have been training hard to come into this match and whether it be 20 minutes or 30 minutes, be able to go the distance again and, um, you know, have the same outcome of outcome that I've had at Slammiversary and on that first ever Ironman match and that is to come out victorious that is to break arms and stay the knockouts champion well thank you so much to and to Rohit who do you think poses the biggest threat in this six-way scramble match you have coming up at Bound for Glory TJP everyone else in that match is fantastic they all bring something uh, to the match, but TJP is on a whole different level than anybody in this match. He's the biggest threat. He's been around the longest. He's the most experienced. He's the most knowledgeable. Uh, he knows what he's doing and then some. And where he comes across very aloof at times and goofy when he's, when he's actually in the ring, he's a huge threat. I know Chris Bay obviously wants to get his revenge because I out finessed him, you know, whatever. But his mind won't be in the right spot because he'll be angry. Jordan, she's coming in. She might be a fish out of water. I know a lot of people are thinking, oh, she's going to come in and, and clean house. Well, guess what? A lot of people might not be uh, so eager to just welcome her, open, uh, welcome her with uh, loving arms and say she might get a kick to the face. And then there's Trey, who also poses a huge threat, but I don't think he's a bigger threat than TJP. I think TJP is the biggest threat, but however, I can't sidestep any of them. I can't overlook any of them. My head has to be on a swivel the whole time on the 24th. So you better believe, I, I believe all of them are a threat to my title, but I think TJP is the largest threat. 
Well, thank you so much for your time and good luck at Bound for Glory. Go kill it out there. Thanks. Ella J, thank you very much from a wrestling gal. Um, Inside the Ropes has been doing a lot more impact content since our next panelist has uh, joined them. So we want to thank Gary Cassidy and Gary, welcome to Press Pass. What do you got for Deanna and Rohit? Yeah, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be covering more impact. I am always desperate to, to do that. So thanks for having me on. My first question is for Deanna. Um, you know, I spoke to Deanna back three months ago, four months ago. And the question that I asked you was, where was next? One name that you uh, hit out with almost instantly was Kylie Ray. So obviously that match is important to you. You've shown that by, you know, pulling out of a couple of appearances recently because you wanted to stay healthy for Bound for Glory. Obviously, Impact have shown you quite a lot of trust. You've reciprocated that um, with those actions. How important is it to you to retain the championship for a start, but also to be more of a permanent fixture and impact and stay at the top of the chain? I think um, for anyone who's a champion, and I'm sure Rohit uh, can echo this, to stay the champion is our number one goal. Um, no one becomes a champion thinking, oh, I don't want to be the champion, or this wasn't my dream my entire life. I've wanted to be a champion since I was a little girl wanting to grow up and be a wrestler. So to retain the championship at Bound for Glory on the 24th means everything to me. It is like the focus of my entire world right now. And Kylie Ray was someone who I wanted to get in the ring with. She had just came to Impact a little bit before me, and I have met her prior on the indies we've wrestled each other a bunch but it's a whole new ball game um holding a championship and then having to defend it um essentially she if she beats me she takes the boot off my table she um you know slays the dragon so to speak because i have been at the top of my game i have made proclamations that i'm the greatest women's wrestler in the world and um, i'm fixated to prove it again at bound for glory but i know that i'm getting in the ring with someone who's also at the top of their game and i don't take that lightly Excellent. Thank you. And I had a quick one for Rohit as well. Rohit, you mentioned that you had been kind of sitting, waiting for a big chance to come along. You'd been, you know, a mainstay of impact for, for many years. You know, your chance came along when there was more brilliant talent and impact than ever before. You know, a load of new signings came in, yet you're the person that ended up with the X Division Championship. What do you attribute that to? Uh, where did that success come from? Was it a, a change you'd made? Uh, no, I just think it's hard work, perseverance. Everything that Impact threw my way, I feel like I performed and took advantage of it and, and made it work. Uh, there is plenty of times I have been frustrated uh, with my position and was always wondering, is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? Is something going to happen? Am I finally going to get a break? And then I finally caught a break and I was waiting and ready to run with the ball. And so as soon as that happened, I hope and feel like my recent stuff has been very entertaining, especially because it's the X division. You think X division, you automatically think, okay, these are going to be phenomenal matches, phenomenal matches, which they have been. And, you know, if you watch any of my work, whether it's outside of impact or obviously in impact with TJP um, and Chris Bay, numerous matches with the Rascals, um, Laredo kid, the one I had with him, uh, my work speaks for itself. But my favorite thing is being the character. And that is something I feel like I bring differently to the X Division where I am this over the top, uh, scummy individual, however you want to put it, that's who I am and that's what I can portray. And that is something different. So finally getting that opportunity, finally getting that chance, I was just waiting. I was just waiting. I was banging my head against the door, that locked door, banging, banging, banging. So as soon as that door opened, boom, I took off. And now I'm getting my opportunity and I don't want to let go of it. I don't want to let go of this opportunity. Like Deanna was saying, you don't want to lose that belt. You want to hold on to it. I refuse to go back to being a nobody in Impact Wrestling. Like you said, I've been the mainstay for a very long time. I've worked my butt off. I don't think I've done anything different. Now I think I'm doing something different. I think I'm turning it up even more and I, I'm going to keep going. The fire is going to keep blasting and keep blasting until it can't blast anymore. And that's not going to happen for a long time. Excellent. Thank you to both of you. And good luck to both of you as well. Thank you, Gary, for your questions and your time here this week on Press Pass with the Knockouts champion, Deanna Perrazzo. 
and the X Division champion Rohit Raju. We're going to head over now to Joey Carney from the Angle Podcast. Hey, Joey, how are you this afternoon? How are you doing, guys? Thank you for having me on. My first question is for uh, Diana. Uh, 2020 has been a whirlwind year. You've managed to really make the most of it. Uh, your matches and impact thus far have really been hard-hitting classics. How do you plan on upping the game at BFG, especially against a high-intensity opponent like Kylie? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to continue to echo myself. Um, knowing what I've done in the last few months at Impact and having to do it again at Bound for Glory, I need to um, consistently, you know, up myself. Um, not just in terms of matches, but in terms of my appearance. I have some amazing, beautiful gear coming um, for Bound for Glory that I'm so excited to, to be able to show everyone. I have been in the ring two, three times a week, every week, just trying to get my cardio up to par, um, work on some new submissions and ways to get into the arm bar and, and just come into Bound for Glory at the top of my game. Um, this is a new opponent. It is someone I haven't been in the ring with at Impact um, thus far, and it'll be a, a first ever match at Impact. So um, I'm not taking it lightly. I'm trying to be the best athlete and the, go into this match as the best competitor that I can um, so I can retain my championship. Awesome. I also want to add that as a fellow citizen from New Jersey, uh, you really are making your hometown or your home crowd uh, really uh, proud with the work that you're doing. So, Oh, thank you that. so much. Uh, my next question is for uh, Rohit. Um, the X Division Championship is a keystone in Impact Wrestling, and you're entering Bound for Glory as a champion. Many gifted athletes. Does the history of both the title and the event uh, affect your strategy going into this match? No, it doesn't affect my strategy. Uh, the history of the title and the title alone, it's something that I'm very honored to hold. It is something I'm very honored to represent. What affects my strategy are the individuals going into this match that are going to be in the match. Uh, obviously, everybody wants to see me get my comeuppance because of how I've handled my run. People are upset with it. They either are, they're very entertained by it or they hate it. Whatever, regardless, that doesn't matter. What matters to me is walking in champ and walking out champ. So I have to figure out a way to obviously mastermind because I know I'm going to take a, a butt kicking because everyone's going to want to put their get their hands on me and hurt me and obviously uh, that's probably going to happen but the main thing is it still remains for the exhibition title so you know they can sit there and beat me up all they want but then they're going to have to go after each other they're going to have to go after each other because there can only be one exhibition champion so while they can work together and take all their hatred out on me they're still going to have to battle for that belt and that is where things will start to fall apart and that's when things will start to fall into my favor. And that is when I will take advantage and remain exhibition champion. So, yeah, the strategy doesn't uh, change because of the history of the title. The strategy changes and is affected by who's in the match and what their plans are for me. Awesome. I appreciate uh, both your answers and good luck to you both. I'm down for glory. Ross, I understand that we have some questions from social media. Don't forget, guys, uh, while you do have your hand raised, and we will try to get to as many folks as we can. We can't get to everybody. So if you do have questions, you can uh, get them through Facebook or uh, YouTube, and we'll, uh, we'll get them asked by Ross. Ross, we got some questions now from social media. Yeah, social media. We got a question here. The first one here is for uh, Rohit. This comes from uh, Bob Jr., and it, it's actually a good follow-up to what you were just saying. Uh, does your strategy involve aligning with any of the five other competitors so it is not simply you against five competitors? I think that ship has sailed, yeah. <laughs> to be honest yeah. with you. Uh, I can always try during the heat of the moment. We'll see what happens out there because obviously they're all great competitors and somebody will definitely want to get the upper hand, but then I just have to watch my back instantly. But as far as walking into the match, no, it's me against the world, pretty much. That's what it is. They're all to defeat Rohit. And, and De Deanna, we got a question from uh, De Manchu who'd like to know, uh, uh, regardless of what happens at BFG, what do you think of uh, the return of Tennille Dashwood along with Caleb with a K? Well... Tennille interrupted my black tie affair. So Tennille is not very high on my list of 
favorite people at Impact Wrestling right now. Um, but to have Tennille Dashwood in our women's division um, is incredible. We have some of the most, uh, most diverse women in our division, and we continue to up our game and be one of, in my opinion, the strongest women's divisions in the world right now. So to have Tennille is only to our benefit. And, um, you know, as long as she's not coming for my title, I will deal with her. Ross, any more questions from uh, from social no, media? No, let's go back to the media questions. All righty. We're going to keep moving along, folks, to get in as many questions as we can from all of you. We go now to Craig from TWM News. Hey, Craig. Hey, guys. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Hello. Yeah. Uh, my first question is for Rohit. Um, obviously, you are the X Division champion, and... Um, Obviously, there is the uh, possibility of option C. If you do leave Bound for Glory's exhibition champion, is option C something you're thinking about, or are you happy with, it, happy with just being champ, exhibition champion at the minute? Right now, my focus is on the exhibition championship belt. It's you know walking out of Bound for Glory as the champion. Anything after that, we'll see what happens. I mean, who doesn't want to be top of the mountain? And right now you have Eric Young and Rich Swan. Uh, I think I'd want to take Swan over Young just because Eric Young is a maniac. And I don't think I'd want him to get his hands on me the same way he's had his hands on Rich. And Rich is someone I've wanted to face for a very long time now, but we'll see what happens. You know what I mean? I, I, Eric Young might put him out of his misery once and for all. So we'll see what happens. But my main concern right now is the X Division Championship belt, and that's staying the X Division champion. That's great. And um, for Deanna, um, obviously, there's been a lot of talk amongst fans, and it's been mentioned a few times on commentary, the um, knockouts tag team t titles. If they do return, are you and are you and your partner, Kimberly, um, interested in going for those, or just you stay as knockouts champion, or do you want to be a double champion? I would love to be a double champion and having the knockouts tag team championships would um, only elevate our division that much more. So that's something um, I hope comes to fruition. I would be a, a great advocate uh, advocate for that because I think that we have so many great women that are all vying for a chance. We all have these alliances right now. Um, me with Kimberly, but we have um, Ty Valkyrie and Rosemary, we have Tasha Steeles and we have Kiara Hogan, we have Havoc and Nevaeh, and it's only growing. Our division continues to be elevated and continue to grow. So I think naturally the next steps um, would be to have tag team championships. And um, I would love to hold all of the gold in Impact Wrestling. Well, I hope, to, hope that happens soon and good luck at both. Good luck both about for glory. Take care. Thanks, Craig. Much appreciated. Next up, WrestleZone.com, Bill Pritchard. Hey, Bill, how's it going? How you doing, Josh? Hey, thanks. So my, my question is first to Deanna. Um, you've made it a point since you came back to Impact to establish yourself as a great wrestler and a character mm -hmm. with, you know, the Virtuosa. But how much of signing with Impact long-term is about building uh building your brand and having some security because the good brothers are a prime example of executing that idea where, you know, they have the security, but you're also seeing talking, talking shop promoted and their brand. So how important is that to you moving forward? That is so important to me. And I think, you know, as professional wrestlers, as, um, you know, individuals who are constantly looking for new opportunities to build our own brands and to, to be successful in new avenues, um, Impact is, you know, one of the few places that lets all of its talent do that. We can explore other ventures while continuing to build ourselves as professional wrestlers. So um, for me, that means everything to have the security long term as a professional wrestler, but also the ability to explore other projects and um, explore who I am outside of wrestling as well. All right. And then I'll ask a similar question to Rohit. You've been pretty much playing a dual role when you're on impact versus your independent appearances. So how important is it for you to establish yourself and 
Rohit Raju as a brand where eventually like is it a goal to maybe only play one character instead of bouncing back and forth I would like to evolve I use Eric Young as a perfect example for that look at how he started you know getting slapped around in Team Canada similar to myself getting slapped around in the Dixie Hit Squad and then it went from uh, you know kind of like aloof goofy funny character uh, to the stone cold killer now. And if anyone sees my stuff, obviously outside of impact, that's what that has evolved in here. I enjoy being Rohit Raju. Obviously it has got me garnered me a lot of attention, um, outside building my brand. I do a lot of workout stuff, a lot of workout videos. I have helped people with workout plans, which is one of my biggest passions is fitness and helping other people get into shape. And then it's helped, Sometimes it helps get more eyes on the indies as well. Uh, I get to use Rohit a lot more, which is really cool. For the longest time, people weren't really interested because nothing was happening, you know, with Rohit. But now Rohit's on top of the on top of the world, which is fantastic. But I would like to evolve the character of Rohit, like I was saying earlier. It is about reinventing yourself. So I would love to be that chip on the shoulder, bitter, angry individual that is out for blood. I enjoy being that as well because it comes from a place that's real comes from a place that's, you know, that bitterness that's inside that anger that's inside uh, even some of that jealousy that's inside that comes from a real place. So being able to involve into that, that is also something that I would like to do. But as of right now too, I am enjoying being who Rohit Raju is because if you look online, I get cussed out almost every Tuesday on Twitter by somebody's fans and uh, I think that's hilarious because you and I talked before, Bill, one of my favorite things is being, uh, I guess you could say an old school character nowadays that, that would be considered old school. I enjoy getting that heat. So that is something I am enjoying in the moment. But yes, always, definitely, I would love to evolve into something more serious and more dangerous and more deadly. And that's just, you know, that's professional wrestling. You got to keep on, keep on moving, keep on going forward. Thank you both very much for your time. Thanks, Bill. Much appreciated. Uh, next up, we're going to go to James from that 90s wrestling podcast. Hey, James, thanks for joining us. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Sorry for my appearance. I've just finished replacing their roof. Um, so my first question is for Dionna. Um, Dionna, you had Knockouts champion, and Knockouts division at the minute is one-off, if not the strongest uh, women's division in professional wrestling right now. Uh, one woman I would like to see join Impact, which she's previously done some work with Impact, and she's wrestled both you and Kylie Ray on the independent scenes. Is Amber Nova? She's someone you'd like to see join Impact one day. Yeah, I would love to have Amber. There's so many girls off the top of my head that I could um, rattle off to you that I would love to see join our division. But uh, like I said, um, you know, the more we grow, the more opportunities we're going to have. So um, to have you know strong women who uh, can wrestle and can go the distance in the ring and are threats to my championship, the better we are all, uh, we all are off. So, um, you know, whether it's Amber, whether it's Willow Nightingale, whether it's Killer Kelly, there's so many girls that I would love to um, see get an opportunity. And, um, you know, I'm vying for our division to continue to grow. Cool. And uh, my question for you, Rohit, uh, <laughs> in my opinion, you have now become the crash holly of the x division championship because every obstacle someone throws against you you always find a way to escape with your title so would you say your resourcefulness would be your biggest advantage at bound for glory well, it has to be it has to be because everyone's out for blood now like i said everybody wants to see me get my comeuppance they want to see me lose my coveted X Division title. Well, guess what? I mean, I can't wait to disappoint the masses and, and hear the internet fans cry because I'm going to walk in champion and I'm walking out. And yeah, like you said, my, I, I always have to have a plan. And there's a huge target on my back. And I realized that I did this to myself by giving out all these opportunities and suckering these people. It's not my fault if they don't take advantage of the opportunity. It's not my fault if they win by count out or they win in a non-title match or something of that nature or they lose in seven seconds right after the match because they were dumb enough to accept. Yes, 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 sure. I'll take the match right there. That's not my problem. You know what I mean? That's not my problem. I outsmarted them and I bound for glory. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm walking on exhibition division champion. Cool. Thanks for having me. Good luck to the both of you.
James, thank you very much for your question. Don't forget, folks, guys, it all goes down live Saturday, October 20, Pound for Glory, exclusively on pay-per-view. And, of course, you can order through the fights here. Very excited for Pound for Glory in just a couple of weeks. Uh, our friend from New Zealand joins us next, David Dunn from NZPWI. Hey, David, how are you? David? I'm good. Hello. Unmuted. You guys can hear me? Yes, sir. We got you. Fantastic. Thank you, Josh. Uh, question for the both of you, but perhaps we'll start with Diana. Um, obviously, wherever you go in wrestling, the goal is to become the champion. But um, in the case of the Knockouts Championship, in the case with Rohit with the X Division Championship, these championships and these divisions have historically been seen as really the premier titles for that style of wrestling. Um, Diana, you mentioned Madison Rain and the influences you've had in the past. If you could just talk a little bit about what it means to hold the championship and to have your name now on this list of greats who have been very influential over the course of um, Impact history. Yeah, I um, immediately thought about that I was in tears at, uh, you know, the Slammiversary pre-show that we did. And, and Madison and I were talking about that exact question what it meant to have my name on the list with Madison Rain, with Awesome Kong, with Gail Kim, with Mickey James, with Tara, all of these, these women who um, have, have just made such a career and such a legacy. Um, and, and to you know, put my name alongside them, these are women that influenced me to want to become a professional wrestler. So um, the fact that uh, I get to be on a list with them and I get to be planning roots and impact and um, you know expanding my career here um, for the long term means everything to me. Um, and the fact that I've been champion for this long and I get to defend it on the biggest stage of the year at Bound for Glory um, just just adds to all of that that meaning and that specialness and uh, all of the feelings. Fantastic. And then same for you, Rohit. Um, the X Division Championship for the long, longest time has produced some of the greatest matches in Impact Wrestling history. What does it mean for you to have that championship and to go on this list with some of the all-time greats? It's huge. Absolutely huge. When I first started watching TNA, I was drawn to Daniels. I was drawn to AJ. I was drawn to Low Key. I was drawn to Joe. I was drawn to all of that. And they were putting like 90s WCW Cruiserweights were one of my favorites. You know what I mean? That, those are some of my favorite matches. And then the X Division, they up that. So now I, you look at it like, well, the X Division title is such a, a key belt. It, it's so important that you really have to stand out with such, I guess you could say, tall cotton that you're walking in. So being able to stand out and do something different is what I'm trying to do. I love to go out there and actually wrestle and work and put on great matches. I absolutely love doing that, but also trying to, I guess, do what I've been doing and stay entertaining and stay different from those guys. That's a real challenge as well. And maintain, you know, ha maintain that title and have some type of longevity and not just be a flash in the pan champion. You hold it and then it's gone and then you never get it back. I'm working hard right now to, make sure whenever I do lose this belt that it does come back around my waist and people remember me for one thing. And that's maybe if they don't remember me for the, like the awesome matches, like uh, AJ and Joe had, but they remember me for being either a real POS or very entertaining, at least this first run. And that's my goal is to be different from all of those guys, but being able to be in the same class, the same sentence, that's huge. Absolutely huge. Hey, fantastic. Thank you so much for your time, both of you, and uh, all the best for retaining those titles at Bound for Glory. Thanks, David. Uh, guys, we've got about 10 minutes left, 10 minutes to go, so we'll get to as many questions as we can, which means that I'll just tee you guys up, ask your questions, and let's see how many we can get through in these final uh, 10 or 11 minutes. Dane from Hooked on Wrestling Europe. What do you got, Dane? Hey, guys. Thanks for that. Um, so I've got a question for each of you. Um, so Diana, in April you were kind of found you found yourself kind of without any work, um, but then just two months later you uh, had won the Knockouts Championship. So in those two months, what were you kind of feeling, and, and what were you, what was your kind of thoughts um, around that time? I was not um, shy with 
what I thought I could do as a performer um, and as a professional wrestler and just needing someone to take the chance and let me be me um, and to come into impact and kind of be, um, be given everything I wanted and more right from the start, um, you know, again, was just incredible, but also a tremendous amount of pressure to now perform to, um, you know, all of the, the hype that I gave myself. So um, those two months between, you know, May, June and July, and then Slammiversary and, and winning the Knockouts Championship, um, again, it was just, how do I become better? How do I up my game? How do I evolve from, you know, the person we saw um, on TV right before I was released to, to the woman we're looking at at Impact to the knockouts champion, um, to now, you know, having to defend it at another pay-per-view. Um, there's just constant layers to all of this and constant development as a human being and as a professional wrestler that um, within those few months, I just had to, to keep elevating and putting that pressure on myself to raise the bar each time um, and live up to the hype that Impact gave me and, you know, uh, give back all of the appreciation I felt um, to the best of my ability. Brilliant, thank you. Um, and then Rohit, of all of your Bound for Glory opponents, who would you say you want to hurt the most? <laughs> hurt the most? Hmm, that's a good question. You know, I really hold no ill will as far as hatred goes to my opponents. I already outsmarted Chris Bay. That was very uh, satisfying. I mean, he deserved that. He had that coming to him. I don't want to hurt any of them the most. You know what I mean? I don't want to, I don't want to hurt it. I just kind of want to rub it in their face a little bit when I have the belt and I outsmart them once again. And I put the period at the end of this sentence, their opportunities after this, they're done. Okay. They've had enough. They've had more than enough. It's time for other opportunities to be given to people that want a shot at the, you know, the champ. I mean, even though they're not worthy, it's time for other people. But right now I have to deal with this. I have to focus on the 24th. So there's no one I want to hurt, but I do want them to get their comeuppance for their greed and constantly trying to take away the spotlight from me. They deserve to lose. I deserve to shine. And that's what's going to happen on October 24th at Bound for Glory. Sounds fair to me. Thank you all so much. Last year's Bound for Glory featured uh, uh, an exciting weekend in Chicago. Uh, Prelude to Glory and South Bend was sponsored by Wrestling Travel. Next up is Danny from Wrestling Travel. Danny, what do you got for our guests this week? Hey, Josh. Thank you very much for that there. Um, with a knockout already having won the Impact World title, and now obviously Jordan Grace competing for the Activision title at Bound for Glory this weekend. Um, so this is a question for both. Do you think a time will come where all the impact divisions outside of the knockouts are going to be completely into gender. Um, I would say... Here's that question for, Danny. Go ahead, Rohit. Um, I, I would say, I mean, maybe, I, I don't know. Who knows? Uh, I think it's cool that anybody can get any title. I mean, it's 2020. Maybe I'll come for the knockouts title. Who knows? And add that to oh. my collection. Not with you, Deanna. I respect <laughs> you too much. Don't worry. Don't worry. Relax. I could, I could feel the, I could feel you like, oh, you know, real so quick. are you saying okay. you're going to lose at Bound for Glory? No, I said in, in time, in time, I'm still mm -hmm. concentrating on the X Division title. And I, I know okay. you'll be victorious at Bound for Glory. I have nothing but faith in you. Don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I you know that's a tough question with the way things are going in professional wrestling. I do think that will take some time. People are on the fence about, you know, intergender wrestling and all this stuff, which is, I get it. That's just time. Things take time. Um, maybe it will, maybe it won't. Who knows? That's a great question. I don't have an answer, but I think when anything works in professional wrestling, when done correctly, that's my answer on all that stuff. I mean, I think that you answered that perfectly. Um, I don't know. I think, again, I said earlier, it's uh, very cool that Impact kind of has broken down those barriers um, already. So I don't see um, the continuance of that being an issue, but I, uh, I don't know. Um, intergender is not 
intergender wrestling is not something that's completely up my alley, so I don't want to say no, but I also don't know. No, thank you very much both, and good luck this weekend. Thanks, Danny. Really appreciate your time. And next up, with just about five minutes to go, guys, uh, Working Fans Wrestling Podcast. Welcome to Press Pass. Hi, hey, thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, my question is for both of you, uh, what do you think makes you stand out as top performers? I'll go uh, first. For me, <laughs> I would no, say... Me, <laughs> I know, it was a nothing but silence. For me, I would say my biggest thing, and I'm so thankful, is that Impact has finally put a microphone in my hand. I am a huge fan, like I said earlier, of old school style wrestling of the characters. My favorite wrestlers like Macho Man, Randy Savage, you know what I mean? He could do it in the ring, but he could do it outside the ring. He could talk people into the building. I love going out there, holding that microphone in my hand and just stabbing people with words. I love getting under people's skin. I love being obnoxious. I love being annoying. And I love the fact that I can do all of that just by running my mouth. It, it's, it's fantastic. The promo for me is my favorite thing in professional wrestling. I literally walk around my house all day cutting promos. That is something I do. And that is something I feel like I excel at. And I am very thankful that I finally get the opportunity to do that. So that's my biggest thing. I, that and just as soon as I walk through that curtain, my goal is to be larger than life. You know what I mean? I'm like five, eight, five, nine. But when I walk through that curtain, I want to be a giant amongst men and women. So that is my goal. And I think that's something I do. So that's what separates me, in my opinion, from everybody else. Um, the complete opposite answer uh, for me is that I think my wrestling is what has always made me stand out. You know, I'm not the greatest promo in the world. Um, I'm not the, the strongest or the fastest or the tallest. I am a great, I am the greatest female technical women's wrestler in the world. Um, and I think that at night after night, when I get to the ring, I get to um, show that. That was some of my favorite wrestling growing up. And it was always my goal to emulate that one day. So I think that I have a game plan when I get to the ring. It's to pinpoint the arm and it's to break it. And I think um, the fact that I tell that story every time and, and that the fans can really grasp onto, um, they know what I'm going for and they know that I'm going to try to try to get that at, at any point in the match and I can win with it at any point in the match, um, elevates everything that I do. So I definitely think the, the storytelling and the, the wrestling is what makes me stand out the most. Well, well said. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Working fans wrestling podcast this will be our last question guys our last question right now we're trying to get through as many questions as we can and as we could as always but thank you guys for joining us and we will have our last question will be from brad marcus from pro wrestling junkies hey brad how are you hi thank you for having me diana this uh, question is for you um you're the virtuoso and from what we've seen rightfully so um with that in mind have we seen your full in-ring arsenal yet? Or are there things you save for high-profile matches like you're having with Kylie? I definitely think that there is um, a whole other beast when it comes to wrestling live on pay-per-view. And I think that the more um, opportunities I get to do that, the more opportunities I have to defend my championship, um, the more, again, I have to up my game. And um, I have a handful of things that I, I'm ready to pull out at a moment's notice. It just, um, again, is about the game plan that I have going into the ring, um, what uh, body part I'm trying to pinpoint, and um, how I can bring in new moves or new elements to the Virtuosa um, successfully to defend my championship. So um, I have a few things that, if need be, I can uh, bring out for Bound for Glory, but we're just going to have to watch and wait and see. And Rohit, can I ask one last question for you? Um, after you retain the title, will you be taking the belt out for a nice dinner? You know it, man. Night on the town, some drinks, me and the little buddy scoping out honeys. You better believe it, brother. Yeah, you know what's up. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everyone.
Marcus, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. I also want to thank the knockouts champion, Deanna Perrazzo, and the X Division champion, Rohit Raju. Guys, thank you for the hour. Thank you for answering all the questions uh, candidly and uh, looking forward to not only your matches at Bound for Glory, but also the final impact wrestling on Access TV before Bound for Glory this upcoming Tuesday. Don't forget, guys, next week it's Impact Week on Access TV. It all gets started with Impact at 8. Talking shop, full keg at 10. That's Tuesday night. Thursday night, it's This Is Bound for Glory. It's an in-depth look at the stars and knockouts as they get ready to compete. We sat down with Deanna Peraza. We sat down with Kylie Ray, and you guys are going to get to hear and see them in their own elements as they get ready for what is going to be the biggest night of the year for Impact Wrestling. And then, of course, Saturday night, the 24th, Countdown to Glory, live, live on Access TV with panelists. There'll be an exclusive match. Um, we also, of course, have the Hall of Fame induction ceremony of the great Ken Shamrock. So a lot happening as we get ready for the biggest night of the year. For now, we say goodbye. Don't forget to stay close to impactwrestling.com and all of our social channels. And, of course, don't miss Impact next week. Thanks, everybody. This has been Press Pass.